Hi right, YouTube. I've had some uh, questions about how I install uh, two max air fans and 600 watts of solar on these uh, Promaster 2500 regular length. So I thought I'd show you. Right here's where the first one's going. This is the uh, factory location for either the air conditioner or the max air fan. And then the second one's going back there. The distance in between the, the openings is 94 inches. So let me get them cut and then uh, I'll get back to you after that. One thing I do, this one is already, uh, I already framed it in before we did the spray foam. We're just now putting the uh, Max Air fan in. Since I already have my wood frame, I'll just come in in the corners and I will drill you know my marker holes and then since I already have my wire ran and I don't want to cut it I'll go right there on the inside I'll, I'll drill a small little hole right in line with the wire that way I know whenever I get up on the roof that after I tape it off that I can make a mark so I'll know that's where that wire is at I did the same thing here And then up here in the front, I did the same thing. I've drilled the holes in all four corners. That way I can go up there and, and tape it off. And then I drilled a hole right in line with where these wires are at. So after I get it taped off, I can take a Sharpie. Focus, focus. There we go. I can take a Sharpie and mark on the tape so I know whenever I'm cutting that's where uh, that's where my wires are so I can raise the blade up so it's not going as deep into the, the metal so it won't clip the wires okay as you can see here I've taped all the the metal off that way whenever I'm cutting it it doesn't scratch the paint and uh, there's the the hole I drilled it to mark the wire and I made a mark here so I know when I get to this area I need to raise that blade up as much as I can till I get past that then I can go back down and finish making my cut and not have to worry about uh, about cutting any of the, the wires and everything off so let me get this cut open all right after I get it cut out here I always take a, a good solid block of wood and some sandpaper and I'll knock all the burrs off of the off the metal all the way around and then I'll put a couple coats of, uh, of spray paint on it uh, just to keep it from resting while I've still got it taped up that way you don't have to worry about getting anything on the on the paint on the body just on the raw edge of the metal I'll let that dry and then we'll get the fan installed okay our paints all dry I've got the, the ring here all prepped. I got butyl tape on it. Uh, all the holes are pre-drilled. And then for back here in the back where the ribs are at, they sell pieces that are pre-made to go in here, little plastic pieces. And if you want to purchase them, that's entirely up to you. But I just fold butyl tape enough to fill the ridge a little high and then after it's uh, screwed down I've got butyl tape all the way around the ring here uh, after it's screwed down and it's covered with dicor it's uh, it's not going anywhere I've this is the way I've always installed them I'm sure they'll be the naysayers you know that you have to have that because it'll leak or whatever uh, I've installed these in some vans that are expediters that in the last two years have put almost 300,000 miles on these vans up and down the road. And I had one in here the other day that still has not had a leak in it. 300,000 miles. So I'm pretty confident the way I'm doing it right now uh, it will prevent it from leaking. So I'm going to get this ring and this back fan on here and then, uh, then I'll show you that before I put the die core on there. 
All right, after I got this all screwed down, you can see where it kind of pokes out a little bit. I just take my finger and I'll smash that in and kind of slope it. And I do that all the way around here. And then I'll uh, install the fan and then I'll cover that all in Dicor. Okay, so I've got the back one installed and it's all sealed up. And here we've got the front one installed and sealed up in order to be able to put the 600 watts of solar in between the two fans i need 84 and a half inches and if you add the the reinforcement angle iron that i'll put on there it'll be about 85 from the front of this or i guess the back of this fan to the front of that fan i've got 86 so that gives me an inch to to play with and still have room for the fans to open and close and not have to worry about it so let's get the solar put together and get it set on here and that way you can get an idea of of how much room you actually have okay so here's all the panels uh panels together this is six 100 watt energy 12 volt panels and we've got these two here in series these two in series and these are two over here which makes them 24 volt and then we have them run parallel and they're all zip tied they're all secured i've got the panel bolted together i got one bolt there another one here this here that's a piece of uh one inch or no inch and a half uh, angle iron, aluminum angle iron, eighth inch thick. That's running across the three panels to tie them all together and give that more support. I've got the same thing on the front side. I've got the same piece here on the back side that ties them all together. These pieces here I had made. Them are 10 feet long. They're uh, two inches wide and three inches tall. That gives you about an inch clearance in the center of the roof. Um, and then once I get them up there, I'll take these out. And I've got uh, uh, pop rivets that are going to go in there. I just got this together so we can get it up on top and uh, get it positioned where it needs to be so I can drill the holes in here and mount it to the, uh, to the ladder rack tabs up on the roof. These are just on there for, for me to lift, and that gives a little anchor point. I found that a lot of people that uh, that use this, they want to be able to fasten a tarp or something to the side so they can use like a carabiner and fasten right here and hang a tarp off the side of it if they need to. So let me get it flipped over here, and I'll give you an idea what it looks like on the other side. All right, here's what it looks like with them all bolted together. As you can see here, put that piece of, piece of angle iron in between there. It's below the surface, so that won't cause any drag. And it just, it helps stiffen the panels up since we've got them all together like that. And then back here, I don't know if I showed this or not. That is a 15 amp solar panel fuse and I've got it back here so you can get to it easily to be able to replace it if something ever happens you don't have to pull the whole panels and everything off this is uh these six panels bolted together is 84 and three quarter long from front to back and then it's 59 and three quarter inches wide so if you do two max air fans on a 159 wheelbase not an extended it will fit between two max air fans it's close you've got less than a half inch on front and back but it is close so let's see if we can get this up on the roof here and show you what it looks like up there okay i've got the solar panels kind of hung here this is how i set these big panels up here you know i don't have a big shop it's just uh Kind of a carport area where i work at outside so i've got a uh, 
thousand pound winch up here in my rafters this electric winch and we do the four corners and raise it up and back the van underneath of it and then set it back down on top of it it works out pretty good all right i'm here making the the brackets to mount the solar panels to the roof of the promaster using the ladder rack tabs they sell these for like forty dollars a piece and to me that's ridiculous so i've got a piece of uh eighth inch inch and a quarter square tubing i ran it through my table saw with a 80 tooth carbide tip blade and uh, cut the center out of it that gives me a full inch and a quarter on the inside space this is a uh, aluminum angle iron that was a uh, one inch by one inch by eighth i ran it through the saw and cut it down to uh seven eighths by seven eighths and then i've made this little jig here just a piece of two by four and a couple pieces of scrap plywood and all i have to do is take the piece of angle iron that i've got put it right in here run it through and then i've got it set up here with a uh, quarter inch spiral uh, bit on my uh, router run it through and it makes that nice little slot right there that will slide right underneath of the uh, the little tab up on the roof so you slide that i've still got to put two holes in here and two holes in this tubing but that'll slide under the tab then you put this over top of it with the two bolts sticking out here that way it pinches it this part will rest against the roof i do have uh rubber strips that will go on here so it's not directly on the roof and then the solar panel l bracket will set directly on top of here all of the aluminum to do all of these panels here uh was less than twenty dollars and i'll have about an hour making all of them so to me that's a lot more reasonable than paying forty dollars a piece for the the ones that are pre-made and uh, it'll work just as good okay here you can see i've got the uh the solar panels all mounted uh these brackets here you can buy them the ones that uh, use the factory t-post you can buy them for like $26 each but uh, I made my own uh, that's just a piece of uh, there it is there's an inch and a quarter square tubing eighth inch wall I ran it through my table saw and I cut this bottom out of it and then that's just a piece of uh, uh, the rubber that you put around your the edge of your doors on your on your car to keep them from uh, chipping paint and stuff up that's all that is that way and that sits down on the on the body and then this piece here that's just a piece of uh one inch eighth inch angle iron aluminum angle i made a little jig and run my router with a spiral bit Cut the slot in it that'll fit right underneath the the t-post and these are uh, stainless steel bolts uh, pan heat carriage bolts that run right up through there and then that uh, that rail there will set right on top of that it's got uh, stainless steel nylon lock nuts on top of it and it's solid it's not going anywhere i did find a new uh, supplier to bend my uh my thicker aluminum for me so I'm gonna be getting 12 foot now instead of 10 but uh, I just now found them so I mean it's not really needed because that is solid I mean I've been up there and I've put all my weight and I'm 300 pounds on that right there and it's not going anywhere but I will be uh, 
getting 12 footers to go all the way back here so if you're doing it you can go with uh, 12 foot that is uh, 2 inch by 4 inch if you're going to do this setup it doesn't need to be 4 inches tall uh, 3 is fine but as you can tell there's there's plenty of air gap underneath of there no wires are touching so you could drop that down a good inch maybe even an inch and a half and and not have any issue and as you can tell it's it's not uh, even with the vents closed it's still lower than the the max air fans uh, this is my little makeshift uh, winter shop until I can get my new one built but uh, and then that's the uh, solar gland I've still got to put the uh, die core on top of that. The wires are ran around. And right underneath of there is where that uh, 15 amp inline fuse on the solar wires are. Just as a little more, a little precaution, I added that in there. And then uh, underneath of the bed, there will also be another breaker box where the uh they'll have another 15 amp breaker and the uh, 40 amp between the charge controller and the batteries all right i had to get down off the ladder there it's getting a little shaky but the uh the wires run in right there's where the uh the solar gland is and it comes in right up here runs in this channel and then it runs down and it'll come in oops sorry runs down here and it'll go through this panel that's removable and then all the electrical will be right underneath of here all the the inverter the batteries uh, there's a board that runs across the back here and uh, that'll have the breaker box, fuse box in it. The charge controller will be on the outside. And everything else will be underneath of the bed. But getting closer to getting this one done. I do have uh, two more in line. So if you need any help on your build, either partial, full build out, or you know whatever diesel heaters i've been installing a lot of them chinese diesel heaters and uh, they seem to be working pretty good so far but if you need any help with that feel free to uh, contact me either through my website through my uh, facebook page under red's custom design instagram here on youtube uh, you can always email me at redscustomdesign at outlook.com. I am located in Tazewell, Indiana. That's about an hour west of Louisville. Again, I thank you for watching. I appreciate every view I get. Thank you.